welcome dear learners. Myself Dr. Sandeep Kumar Bansal, Professor at Ramesh Institute of Vocational and Technical Education, Greater Noida, is discussing unit second of the subject Pharmaceutical Organic Chemistry that is BP 401T. In our previous lectures, we have discussed about the geometrical isomerism, conformational isomerism, what are the various conditions required to exhibit geometrical isomerism, conformational isomerism, what are the hindrance, what are their significances and what are their various uses. Now, in this lecture, we are going to discuss about the atrope isomerism. So, here are three objectives that we are going to cover in this discussion, namely first is what is atrop isomerism, second what conditions are required for atrop isomerism by aryl compounds, actually by aryl compounds are the very good example of atrop isomerism. So, that is why our entire discussion will be focused on the atrope isomerism with reference to biaryl compounds and how stereochemical assignments means how they are configured, how their configuration is done. So, my dear students, so our complete discussion will be divided in three parts that is atrope isomerism, what is atrope isomerism, we will try to understand it with help of various examples what conditions are required for atrope isomerism by aryl compounds and how various stereochemical assignments are done. So, to have an idea about atrope isomerism, we should understand about the chirality of organic molecules. Generally, chirality or molecular dissymmetry is the necessary and sufficient condition for a molecule to be optically active. Means, compound will be optically active only and only when it possesses chirality or dissymmetry. Means, there must be some chiral atoms should be there and the presence of the chiral atoms make the molecule optically active. But, there are some molecules that do not contain chiral carbon, but still they are chiral. So, what conditions are making these type of molecules optically active? Means, they molecules they are not having any chiral carbon atoms, but still they are chiral and what parameter or which criteria is making these type of molecules chiral that is the axis. So, this is the chirality due to axis, chirality arising out of axis and uh, there are numerous examples, numerous, numerous compound type of compound that exhibit this type of chirality. For example, cumulins with even and odd numbers of double bonds, alenes, spiral compounds, alkylidene cycloenes, cycloalkanes, biphenyls and these are typical examples that exhibit atrope isomerism. So, what types of compounds are exhibiting atrope isomerism? They are substituted cumulins chiral axis in alenes, spiral compounds, alkylidene cycloalkanes and biphenyl. So, our entire discussion will be focused on the biphenyls, which how biphenyls are atrope isomers or how they are exhibiting atrope isomerism and what conditions are required. So, let us talk about first of all biphenyl compounds. So, what are biphenyl compounds? If we draw biphenyl compounds, so we can arrange them in a two 
different pattern. This is one pattern generally we encountered in our books and this is known as naphthalene. This is one arrangement possible So, this is fused one, but this biphenyl compounds are the compounds whereby phenyl ring is connected to another phenyl through a central sigma bond. So, this sigma bond central sigma bond is helping or attaching one phenyl nucleus one phenyl ring with the another. So, simple biphenyl can be easily rotate by C C bond and it is symmetric to simple biphenyl is a chiral yeah, simple. Here we are we are what I am asking I am asking that it is a chiral why because it is free to rotate it is symmetric distribution it is having symmetric distribution. So, that is why it is rotation is free and therefore, it is a chiral and this C C sigma bond we are calling it pivotal bond say here. So, this is C C sigma bond and we are calling it pivotal bond. So, unsubstituted biphenyl compounds are a chiral compounds and we generally number them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime, 4 prime, 5 prime and 6 prime. And if we talk about their position available for substitution, they can say ortho, meta, para, ortho, meta. These are ortho prime position, meta prime position, and para prime position. So, our discussion will be based on this numbering system and number system. So, let us proceed further. In unsubstituted by phenyl, there is sufficient amount of freedom of rotation around the central single bond to allow for free interconversion between various conformers or rotamers, so that the various rotamers cannot exist independently. Means, if there is no substitution at ortho positions, meta positions, para position, so that type of compounds are free to rotate and they rotamers cannot exist independently therefore, they are a chiral or optically inactive. They are optically inactive. Let us see what will happen if we put some substituents. What will happen? Substituted by phenyl at ortho position. Remember which position we are talking about? So, we are talking about the ortho position. So, by phenyl substituted at ortho position in which contain a chiral axis along the biphenyl linkage. So, we are substituting ortho position that is in accordance with the this chiral axis. So, the biphenyl ring are perpendicular to each other why this perpendicular position is required. If we do not put perpendicular position then this substituent will overlap with each other they will create lot of hindrance. So, the molecule must be present these two by phenyl these two phenyl nucleus let us say A and B they must be present at a perpendicular position to each other. So, that there will be minimum steric classes between all these four ortho substituents meaning them rotation about the by phenyl bond through pivotal bond is restricted. Now, what impact we are observing? until it was unsubstituted it was free to rotate as soon as we introduce substituents at ortho position the rotation about pivotal bond is restricted. What impact molecule are stuck or lock into one specific conformation. Now, this conformation exists as a separate entity and can be resolved into its separate anencyomers. So, the impact that was of the substituents on the substituted by phenyl it was that the interconversion between two isomers is restricted or it becomes slow and due to this the rotomers exist as a separate entity 
and they can be dissolved in separate enantiomers. And this phenomena was first of all observed in year 1922 by Christie and Kenner. What they did? They separate the dissolve the 6 6 prime dinitrophenyl 2 2 di prime bicarboxylic acid. So, they separated this molecule, but it is amazing to know that they have separated, but this term atropisomerism came into existence later. So, due to the substitution at ortho position, we are getting different types of rotamers and their rotamers are called conformational not conformational isomers, we are calling them at atrop isomers. So, term atrop isomers arises from two words A and tropes, A and tropes. So, A stands for not and tropes means turn, means without no turn. So, the literary meaning of atrop isomers is the there is no turn, there is no rotation and atrop isomers word name was introduced by Kuhn in 1933 and 10 years back 1922 almost 11 years back. The scientists separated the atrop isomers. So, atrop isomers now it is time to define now it is time to give the definition of atrop isomers what are atrop isomers. So, atrop isomers can be defined as isomers that can be isolated due to prevention or restriction of rotation about a given single bond. Highlight or underline this line due to prevention or restriction of rotation about a given single bond and between two planar moieties. So, what are atrop isomers? Atrop isomers can be defined as the isomers that can be isolated due to prevention or restriction of rotation about a given single bond and usually between two planar moieties. So, there was there is one more definition by given by the scientist Oki who said that atrop isomers can be regarded a physically separable species when they interconverted with the half life of more than 1000 seconds. There is a barrier of 1000 second. So, that approximate is 16.7 minutes. So, at a given temperature they must exist for more than 1000 seconds. So, we are considering them as uh, atrop isomers. So, my dear students I hope you must have got the definition of atrop isomers. Now, elaborate these atrop isomers can be categorized in two types by non bridged by rails and bridged by rails. This is one example. So, very good example that is by naphthyl B nap and this was a credit for Noyori to got a Nobel prize in 2001 in chemistry for discovery of this B nap and B nap can be used for the chiral catalyst for the asymmetric hydrogenation of C double bond C and C double bond O bonds. Now, in starting I have told you that what are the we have to are going to cover in this particular lecture. So, first concern was the key what are atrop isomers, what conditions are required it is very very again important what conditions are required to existence for existence of the atrop isomer the number one rotatably stable axis. This axial axis should be rotatable and it should be stable and presence of different substituents on the both sides of the axis. And my dear students, these substituents should not be similar, otherwise, they will not put hindrance to the rotation and the configurational stability of the axial chiral viral compound is mainly determined by three following factors. What I am saying? We are putting stable axis, and what factors are determining this stability? What factors are responsible for the steric stability? So, these are combined steric demand of the substituents in the proximity of the axis means what is the what are the steric features what are the steric features required what are the steric features available 
so that are clearly defining about the stability of this axis, existence, length and the rigidity of the braces. What is the length, what is the bond length, what is the existence, what is the rigidity. So, these all factors are also affecting the stability and atropoisomerism mechanism different from physical rotation about the axis photochemically or chemically induced processes. So, these parameters are ensuring these parameters are explaining the stability of this rotationable axis. So, students there is this axis must be rotatable, stable and the substituents must be variable from each other. Let us see. Atropisomers are recognized as physically separable species when at given temperature having a half life thousand second. This I have told you a few minutes back. So, this is, has the plane of symmetry. So, that is why it is optically inactive. The plane of two aryl groups must be non planar, that I have told you that they must be at a an angle of 90 degrees, they must be perpendicular to each other. They must be perpendicular to each other and null planarity can be introduced by placing bulky group in the ortho position. So, how we have to introduce this non planarity? Non planarity can be introduced with the help of putting bulky groups and the planar conformations are destabilized due to steady repulsion. So, as soon as we are putting these bulky groups at the ortho position immediately the planarity of the molecule get disturbed and they are exist at a perpendicular to each other or at the angle of 90 degree. So, most of the tetra substituted biphenyls can be resolved and quite stable to the racemization at least two of the groups are fluorine or methoxy. Also, substituents increases the restricted rotation through pivotal bond, but by their steric repulsion. Now, if we arrange them in their order of stability, it comes iodine, bromine, chlorine, nitrate, acetate, orthomethyl, fluoride and hydrogen. So, steric repulsions are at maximum with iodine substituent followed by bromide, chloride, nitrate. So, and these steric repulsions are responsible for the loss of planarity of the molecule. So, mono ortho substituted by aryl compounds do not stable atropisomers at room temperature and this type of compound. So, atropisomers of both substituents are bulky. So, again and again I, what I am saying that there must be substituents at ortho position and they must be bulky if they are not bulky the molecule will not lose planarity and there will be no existence of the atrope isomerism. Now, there is one more new term that is buttressing effect. What does it mean? If we talk about the position what we are calling meta 3 prime. So, this is 3 prime position here we can say there is a presence of nitro group and these type of groups the presence of group what it it is doing what this group is making changes. So, this presence of other substituent at 3 prime position is providing more and more steric hindrance and the hindrance provided by groups is in order of nitrate, bromide, chloride and methyl. So, if two substituents on ortho positions are similar, but meta substituents are different then the molecule is considered as the chiral. Say here ortho substituents are same all ortho substituents are same here it H but merely the presence of this nitro group at 
3 prime position is making this molecule optically active and that is why this we are calling it buttressing effect. In a bialyl compound when 4 ortho substituents are equal, if these are connected pairwise through 2 bridges the D 2 symmetry diether also so axial chirality. So, this is one more example of the axial chirality, there is no substituent there is almost 4 methyl substituents here, but they are locked with the presence of ether linkage. So, these types of compound also exhibit atropisomerism, hetero aromatic system provide chirality even through their ortho substituent are same here. All the substituent are same, but this type of compounds are also so atrope isomerism. So, these are the few indicative representative examples of the atrope isomerism. Now, this is the time to go for the stereochemical assignments, how we can give their stereochemical assignments. So, since biphenyl do not owe their symmetry due to presence of asymmetric carbon atom, so criteria now is totally change presence of chiral axis. So, ortho and in some cases meta substituents are the first assigned priority on the basis of CIP rules. So, here we are following CIP rules to the ortho and meta substituents and depending on the priority rotation we are assigning them P plus or delta for clockwise rotation and M minus for anti clockwise rotation or counter clockwise rotation. So, we are using here the symbol P or M we can use symbolically like this plus or minus. So, this is for clockwise this is for anti clockwise sometime we can also configure them for R s configuration. So, how it is assigned let us see this is an example. So, here we are representing these two substituents they are near to we are representing on the vertical line and the substituents that are far from the viewer we are representing on the horizontal line. Now, this is the question why I am putting B on this. So, if we look molecule from this side. So, this B prime is on the left hand right hand side that is for this is right hand side and this if we are looking from here it is right hand side. So, that is why I am putting this as. Now, what I have to do I have to travel from the molecule atom substituent with high priority on a vertical line to the substituent on a circle with high priority. Now, if I am moving clockwise it is P, if I am moving anti clockwise this is M. So, I am moving like this. So, this is the configuration M. In this case I am moving like this. So, this is configuration is P. Clockwise if I am moving P and counterclockwise if I am moving it is M. Remember what we are doing if we are moving clockwise, so we are giving it P plus. If we are moving anti clockwise, we are giving it M or minus. I have told you that we can also assign them R s configuration. So, I have R s configuration can be assigned in a fashion see this is one representative example. So, look the molecule from this side left hand side rotate the molecule through right hand rotate the molecule right hand. Now, near our eyes will be on the board line vertical. So, the substituents that are present to near to us they are represented on the vertical line, substituents that are away from us they are represented on the horizontal line. Therefore, it can be given the assignment high priority if we are moving like this. So, we are getting clockwise and we are assigning it R. Now, what we have to do in next step observe the molecule from right hand side and rotate the molecule left hand side put all the substituents on the vertical line and horizontal line and if we are moving clockwise 
again it will be assigned the R configuration. So, dear students in this way we can know we can use or we can understand how this atrop isomerism is done and how the configuration is done for the different molecules. So, we can go for isomerism using R, S, P and minus. So, this is the way how we can assign or so thank you very much and in next lecture we will discuss about the stereo specific and stereo selective reactions. So, thank you students.